Hi there and welcome back to Retail Week Live. We are nearing the end of the first day. You may hear the music in the background. But first, before we get to, down to the cocktail party, I've been joined by DFS boss Ian Philby. Hi Ian. What's your highlight of the day been so far? Oh gosh, I didn't know you were going to pick me onto one single highlight. Um, go on, I'll do a double one. I've just been to a great session with first Alex Baldock yeah. and then John Timpson. Okay. Almost two ends of the spectrum, Absolutely. but both making some, some really good points. You know, as a CEO, I'm always looking for those little nuggets yeah. that might be able to take back to my business and just get me to sort of uh, relook at my leadership. And uh, both, both those sessions had some uh, really good really good insights. Are you able to say what the particular standout points were from those? Oh gosh, well I mean I guess uh, Alex Baldock painted a future with artificial intelligence, yeah. going to be taking over all those analysts doing all that clever stuff so we're going to be bombarded with even more personalised marketing uh, information and then I guess John talking about sort of upside down management, you know the whole company really there supporting the person, the man or the lady on the front line uh, talking to customers and giving them ultimate autonomy to to give uh, delight to customers sounds like great insight and you yourself sat on a panel earlier today about the future of fulfillment and i was really interested in what you were saying about it being purely um truly sorry omnichannel yes um and it sounded like dfs is making some really strong moves in that direction can you tell us about some of the things that you've been doing yeah no so um you know in the end we have a vertical integration so extraordinarily we we can be taking a customer's orders making it in one of our factories in the UK on one day and 48 hours later having gone from there to our local redistribution centers it's going to be installed by our own delivery teams and our own vans mm. in consumers homes so this is a this is a real area of differentiation and what we've been doing is just responding to what customers want. You know, customers don't want delivery half past eight to half past four Monday to Friday. No. They want it evenings, they want it Saturdays. So we've had to change the whole rostering of all our people in our organization. We tell customers two hour delivery slots. We let them know half an hour before. We tell them 10 days before so they can organize for the old sofa to go out. We've put all our redistribution into local centers so it's more professional and services four or five local stores. So these have been immense changes that we've undertaken in a very short period of time. Also today we had uh, the budget and the, um, the Chancellor said there was some scope to reform the, um, the business rates revaluation. How is the revaluation set to affect DFS and, and where do you stand on this? Well, currently, uh, across our portfolio of stores, it is fairly neutral. So at the moment, sort of neither plus nor minus. And what I like from what I've heard about the business rates is we, we support the BRC in the view that it, it's a property tax yeah. and not a business rate. So I think the first sort of glimmers that it's going to be re-evaluated and there's going to be some acknowledgement of online business begins to break the principle the business rates are about property. In the long run, what would you like, really, really like to see Hammond doing, though? What big changes? No, I think we've been calling, and we would support this at, at DFS, we're calling for much more of a root and branch re-evaluation of business rates. If you look what they are as a cost to British retail versus retailers in Europe, it, it's completely out of sync. You know, and I think it, it, it's not helping uh, the consumer in Great Britain. Fingers across some changes uh, to sound the line there. Indeed. Um, and another thing that you warned about at your recent results was the increasing risk of, of a slowdown in the furniture sector. So, speaking quite broadly now across the whole sector, um, how are you seeing um, volatile consumer confidence, for example, sort of playing out this year? Yeah, I mean, in the end, obviously, you can see that consumer confidence is lower than it was a year ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know we've been at great pains to tell people who invest in our company that as long as consumer confidence runs somewhere between about minus 10 and plus 10, it doesn't fundamentally really change the health of the furniture market. That's where it appears to be going at the moment. So there are no immediate alarm bells and that's consistent with what we've been saying up to date. Prudent viewers of the marketplace would look at 2017 and say, 
it could be a little bit tougher and, and we wouldn't we wouldn't disagree with that prudence but but not because of uh, anything we've declared in terms of current performance do you have any advice or, or anything that, that furniture retailers can be doing to sort of stem the tide of any of this um, uncertainty or Oh, I mean, I, I think, uh, hey, look, I'd be the same message to any retailer, you know, when when, uh, when the consumer is facing slightly tougher times, you know, just really focus on giving fantastic value. And value, of course, is a mixture of great service and great product at great prices. And uh, and, and that's uh, that will see the best retailers through any slightly tougher time. Ian, thank you very, very Lovely. much. Lovely. Thank you, mate. Cheers.